Welcome grade 10s. Today we will be starting with the first part of your environmental studies and the topic is biosphere to ecosystems. Biosphere learners, we need to understand that no organism can exist alone on our planet Earth. Okay? It is dependent. All organisms are dependent on natural resources to support and to sustain its life and needs. Our whole existence, children, is influenced by nature and everything in it and the interaction with people around us. Now, plants and animals also can't exist without influencing each other. We need to understand that, okay? We need to understand that the animals and the plants are influenced by nature as well as by other organisms that are surrounding them. Ecology. Now, ecology means the study of organisms, which are the plants and the animals, okay? The study of plants and animals in their natural habitats, okay? Now, when we study ecology, when we study these organisms in their natural habitat, we're not just studying the organisms themselves, but we are including the relationship and the interactions that these animals might have or these organisms might have between other living organisms. Okay? When we study ecology, we will be studying also the interaction between these organisms with their environment. Okay? What does that mean? It means that all organisms are dependent again dependent on other organisms as well as the environment so organisms don't only depend on one another they also depend on their environment in order to survive So now you have a little bit of insight into what our topic is going to be about. Okay, let's move on. Let's look at the term biosphere. Okay, now what do you understand by the word biosphere? So the biosphere is all the places on earth and in its atmosphere where living organisms can exist. What is the biosphere? It's the part of the earth that supports life. It includes the oceans, the rivers, dams and lakes, right? As well as all the other watery parts on earth where life occurs. What else does the biosphere consist of? Yes, it also consists of the air around the earth in which all the living organisms can breathe. So the air is also part of this biosphere. But the biosphere also consists of the earth itself, right? And this includes the soil, it includes rocks, it includes mountains, because it is also in these places where life can occur. So what is the biosphere, children? It is that part of the earth that supports life. Let's go back to our slide, right? So the biosphere is all the places on earth and in its atmosphere where living organisms can exist. Now the biosphere consists of three parts, right? We have the soil and the rocks that are on the earth's surface. That part of the earth we call the lithosphere. Then we have the gases that surround the earth and that part is known as the atmosphere. And then 
we get the seas, the rivers and the lakes forming the hydrosphere of the earth. So the earth consists of three parts. Let's begin with the soil part of the earth which is the lithosphere. Okay, it is the outermost crust of the earth which is covered by rocks, sand and soil. Okay. Okay, so okay, so we know that it consists of the solid earth, right? Weathering of the rock forms sand and soil. When we speak about weathering, we mean the breaking down of the rock. When the rock breaks down, it forms sand and soil. Now the soil that is formed is very essential. It's very important for plants and indirectly for the animals as well. Okay, now let's look at the importance or the usefulness of the lithosphere. Serves as a habitat for many organisms. Okay, we know that many microbes, for example, microorganisms like earthworms, bacteria, they all live in the soil. Okay, it's their habitat. The next part we will look at is the atmosphere, which is the air part of the earth. The atmosphere comprises of air, right? Now, in the atmosphere, we will find approximately 78% of nitrogen, 21% of oxygen, 0,04% of carbon dioxide. So the air is also composed of other gases like water vapor, ozone, hydrogen as well as impurities what are impurities yes impurities in the air are the air pollutants caused by pollution okay they are not part of our fresh air for example carbon monoxide right let's move on what is the importance or the usefulness of our atmosphere it contains important gases that is used during respiration. Can you think of the important gas used during respiration? It is oxygen, right? Human beings and animals, we are breathing in oxygen and we are releasing carbon dioxide as a waste product. And what are the plants doing? They are undergoing a process of photosynthesis where they are using the carbon dioxide which is our waste product in order to produce its own food and releasing oxygen as a waste product. Now processes like respiration and photosynthesis are very important children. Okay? Because it is taking place in nature allowing for the use and recycling of gases okay and this is very important because it ensures that the percentage or the composition of these gases remains constant in the atmosphere right why else is the atmosphere important it filters out sunlight and it reduces harmful effects of the sun's rays now the Earth's water forms a single circulating system involving evaporation, condensation and precipitation. That simply means that the Earth's water is continuously in motion, right? There's a continuous movement of water as it makes a circuit from the oceans to the atmosphere to the Earth and on again, okay? We call that the water cycle. So, the water on earth is in constant circulation. Now, let's look at the importance or the usefulness of the hydrosphere. Again, it forms the habitat for many organisms. Many organisms like fish, they are living in this water. It's home to them. Water is essential for all living organisms, plants and animals. That's very important. Why is it important? Children, Water is one of the most important substances on earth. All the plants, all the animals must have water to survive. 
If there's no water, what's going to happen? There would be no life on Earth.